I'm the best at what I do, and together it's like, it's on. In case some of you wonder who the best is, they're up here on this plaque on the wall. You sure you're ready for this? I'll do my best. Your best? Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and f*** the prom queen. Here we go, boys and girls. We are live. It's the best soccer show. It's pregame for USA Guatemala. Jason Davis, Jerry Dubois. We are live on Ustream, which is one of those places you can watch the game. I know it costs 30 bucks. Let's, let's lay this out there. There's a little bit of confusion, Jared. And before we get to our yeah. guest, patiently waiting. There's a little bit of confusion. No, the best soccer show is not streaming the game ourselves. We are not streaming the game. We are not going to be a place. Yes, you should still watch us around the game, though. Yes, we will be here for pregame. We'll be back at halftime, and we'll be after, back after the game for a postgame show. So if you aren't able to see the game, we'll at least be able to catch you up. But you want, if you want to pay your $30 and watch it on Ustream, you can do that. And obviously, it's available on pay-per-view through various television providers. So let's, that's it. That's, let, that's the TV situation. Okay, so we are... Uh, we are ready to go with the pregame show. We've got a lineup. We've got an outlook on this match. We need three points from this uh, Central America uh, sojourn. We've got a guest. And we've got a guest. John Godfrey from the New York Times Gold Blog is joining us. How are you, John? Good. How are you guys doing? Not bad. So let's, uh, let's jump right into this. Okay, the first thing that stands out for me looking at this lineup, John, and I'm sure you're the same way, Fabian Johnson's back. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's a 4 3 2 one Christmas tree. It's a narrow formation. And the reason they can do that is because Fabian Johnson can scoot up and down the, uh, the left side, uh, attack, cross the ball. He can make a difference. You know, Terundolo, I haven't seen a lot of that out of him in recent games. Uh, uh, he's, has he lost a step? I don't know. But Fabian Johnson can, can bring some width to a narrow formation. And I think that's uh, it's a great thing for Jurgen and a great thing for the U.S. You know, John, I think that when you bring up uh, Stevie Terundolo and his lack of ability to get forward on that that right wing, I think Donovan's been doing a bit of doing a bit of a disservice because Donovan's been doing something that's not necessarily his game. He's been staying kind of wide and staying out on the touchline, which is uh, getting that making it kind of compact for Terundolo to go forward. I think Donovan's game needs to be cutting inside and opening up that channel for Terundolo. If he can do that, I think Terundolo can be successful. Do you see that as Dempsey's role as well in this team? Do, do both these guys need to get into the center more, or do they need to spread it out a bit? I think they're trying to figure it out because now they have this guy in Gomez who's making really smart runs, nonstop runs all the time. And Dempsey and Donovan, I hate to say it, haven't been that accustomed to having a striker like that who is working tirelessly to get into spaces. So mm-hmm. I think there's an adjustment period going on. I do think that uh, Johnson's job is to push forward, and maybe maybe it's a tactical choice to have Terundolo stay back, be a, more of a safety first fullback, and, and let the attack really flow down the left side. But uh, I haven't quite figured out whether or not it's a Chirundolo Donovan thing or just that they're adjusting to having a striker in Hercules who, who's really making stuff happen. That's a little, you know, if you, if you don't have Chirundolo matching Johnson on the, on the other side, it seems like it's unbalanced, but at the same time, you're, you're leaving extra help in the back, and, and maybe that's the, the idea. Or maybe, like you said, maybe Chirundolo has just lost a step. I, I don't know what Klinsman's asking him to do, and we're not sh- entirely sure that what Klinsman's trying to do is is working at this point. Um, coming off of 3-1 against Antigua and Barbuda, that is not going to inspire a whole lot of confidence. This is Guatemala. They're, you know, they're, they're nothing super, you know, there's nothing to write home about necessarily, but it's in Central America. We typically struggle there. What do we expect tonight uh, against a, a better opposition in a hostile environment? Well, first of all, I want to say that the U.S. 3-1 win over Antigua and Barbuda looks about 17-18% better than it did a few days ago because Antigua and Barbuda just tied Jamaica. Right. So yeah. that's a significant uh, result for the, for the minnow, and I think that that, that that helps. So I think that that puts a little bit of perspective into things. That said, playing in Guatemala uh, with a desperate team with crazy fans, okay. uh, with barbed wire around the pitch, uh-huh. uh, maybe, maybe thunderstorms. Yeah, this, this is not playing in Tampa near the strip mall. This is... This is uh, and the strip clubs, by the way. Uh, this is <laughs> going to go out to Evil City. <laughs> this is something totally different, and who knows who's going to show up? I, I do like I do like the veteran squad. I do like the formation. I think Dempsey's going to come out like he shot out of a cannon. 
Uh, but this is going to be a much uh, sterner challenge than what we saw on Friday. John, I saw you uh, say something on Twitter a little bit ago before we came on the air. I want to give you a chance to clarify it a bit. You mentioned something about uh, Jose Francisco Torres not being in this game and maybe that you're a bit surprised. You thought maybe he could come in for someone like Marisa Du. Is that something that you think uh, that that's a better lineup for the U.S. and having Jose Francisco Torres on the pitch and Moa Du maybe off of it? Or did I read that wrong? You know, I, I, it was a question more than anything else. Uh, Torres took a whack on his, on his ankle, the same ankle that was injured earlier in the year or late last year. And I, I, I asked the question, is this a tactical decision on Clinton's part or is it tied to the injury? And I, and I really don't know. But I do think that in this sort of game, uh, a little bit of, a little bit extra defense isn't such a bad thing. That said, I, I think Torres is a really strong defender and I haven't seen uh, a lot of great play out of Maurice Adu in, in recent games. So, you know, it's a tricky thing. I don't know what the answer is. If it's, if it's just to go with a guy you know is healthy or, you know, go with a dude, put him in that number six and let Bradley and Jones really push forward. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how they, they come out. Uh, those middle, those midfielders, we don't know how they're going to be lined up, but I would be willing to bet that a dude's going to sit back and then Bradley and Jones are going to push forward and try to make things happen in the middle. We, we hope that's the case. I mean, I think that's the, the one of the million-dollar questions with this team, and what we, we want to see is a dude in that six, uh, the number six role, but that hasn't actually happened over the last couple of games, and it didn't, it, you know, against Canada, Bradley is sitting deeper. Against Antigua and Barbuda, it's, it's a little bit muddier, and, and, and Bradley is, is still sitting pretty deep. If he gets up the field, we all feel better about the attack, do they lose anything in defense? Uh, you know, uh, Marisa, do uh, Jared's made this point closer to goal? If he gives away the ball there, we're we're talking Ricardo Clark moments here. Yeah, that's that's the worry. I, I haven't I haven't been confident in him in in any of the recent matches. I was down there in Tampa, and he was playing further back than Jermaine and Michael, which sometimes you can only see when when you're there and you get the whole perspective of the field. But yeah, he, he does have those gaps. The one thing he does have is some great speed mm-hmm. so that if he does give the ball up, he can, he can uh, recover. But I, I'm, I, I'm not thrilled to see him in that spot. But again, I'd rather see him there and let Michael Bradley create because that's the rare commodity within most teams and certainly within this U.S. team. John, we had Kyle Martino on the show last Friday, and we talked about Josie Altador a bit, and he kind of led on that it's, it was kind of public knowledge around camp that Josie came in out of fitness. Since then, Jurgen Klinsmann's come out, been kind of outs- outspoken, and I was kind of personally shocked by how, uh, I guess, uh, candid Jurgen Klinsmann was in talking about a player's fitness. This is a pretty big change from the era of Bob Bradley, isn't it? Are you surprised that Jurgen Klinsmann is uh, talking so outwardly about a player's fitness and kind of almost calling them out in the media a bit, isn't he? You know, Bob Bradley, he didn't love talking. And when he did talk, <laughs> he didn't always say that much. <laughs> Clinton loves say. talking, and he actually says things. I mean, it's, it's a journalist delight. And, and uh, I think that that's, that's going to happen. I think, I think you're going to read a quote somewhere. I'm not sure where it came from, but he, he'd rather have people you know, seeing the Panama Canal than sitting in the rooms and playing Xbox. He'd rather, you know, help them develop as people and players than letting them sort of, you know, tweet all day. You have to call in the kettle black a little bit paper when I say that. But, um, <laughs> but, but you know, he, he's, he's had a chance to play, work with these guys, and some of them are responding. Some of them didn't need to respond because they were already there, you know, someone like Clint Dempsey. But then maybe some of the guys who are cutting corners, who are enjoying their celebrity and acting a little maturely, uh, they're going to start to suffer the consequences. They're going to watch some soccer matches from the bench or – or from the uh, press box. Uh, you you got to wonder what it might do to to Josie's morale or the team's morale about Josie and those kind of questions. I think those those are lingering things. I have to go back to the midfield right now because uh, I, am I wrong to be nervous about a fairly combustible player in Jermaine Jones in a Central American environment? Uh, absolutely. I mean, he, he's, he's that kind of guy. He's the kind of guy that gives you that steel and will stand up for it. You know, he's, he's that enforcer, that, that Marty McSorley type. That can get uh, us in trouble. Through. That can get us in trouble. Red <laughs> yeah, cards I mean, will Marty come McSorley flying out. got a lot of five-minute majors. Yeah. You know, Marty Mark McSorley gave up some power plays back in the day. But I think that that's, that's what's, it's the give and the take. He, he has the steal, and, uh, but he also, he just, his head can blow up. You know what, what's great to see is that Michael Bradley seems to have figured this out. Michael Bradley... Used to be that guy. Right. He, he would just go. He would go ballistic at the drop of a of a ball, 
And and I haven't seen any of that. I, I actually saw him during the Scotland match. He was smiling, and that's that's <laughs> not a, that's not his natural state of grace. To to I don't, I'm not sure. He, I didn't wasn't sure he had those muscles. So yes, Jermaine Jones is always a risk, but what he offers you that box to box play and that chance of a game changing play is worth the risk. But it, yeah, he, I, I'm sure the Guatemalans know all about him, and they're going to try to get under his skin. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you just mentioned the Guatemalans. We haven't spent much time talking about them just yet. I think just about every one of our listeners or viewers is familiar with Carlos Ruiz. That's the big name everyone knows. They know the danger he represents both in terms of skill and in terms of baiting. shenanigans. Yeah, <laughs> baiting, shenanigans. Let's talk about Guatemala for a second here, John. Do you think that a lot of people are talking about that Guatemala is going to sit back in, they're going to bunker in, the U.S. is going to have all the possession, they're going to have to break them down. This is a home game for Guatemala. Do you think that they're going to play that defensively and that maybe negatively? Or are they going to maybe try to represent for their home stadium and their country right now and try to play the game straight up against the U.S.? I think they're going to go for it. And Clint Dempsey said as much. I wrote a piece uh, that was in the Times today about what to expect. And yes, Antigua and Barbuda, they, they, park, they parked the bus. They had 10 men behind the ball, uh, 9 or 10 the whole game. But Guatemala needs a win, and they're going to have fans you know, pulling for them. They're going to have a lot of confidence, and even though they haven't beat the U.S. in quite a long time, they're going to have a lot of belief. So I, I, think, that, I think that it's going to be a, a slugfest. It's not going to be one team punching, the other team sort of uh, – Counterpunch. I think it's going to be. They're they're really going to go toe to toe. That's that's what I expect, and and as, and as the fan of me, that's what I hope. Well, I mean, do you do you think that actually plays into the Americans' hands? Considering you know coming off of Antigua and Barbuda, they scored three goals, but it, it wasn't like it was easy. They had problems getting the ball off their feet in the box. If 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 Guatemala wanted to bunker in, that actually makes it more difficult on an offense that has not shown the ability to break down a team that's sitting back like that. I think that. Guatemala is going to be tempted to come out and, and, and play all across the pitch, and I think that definitely plays into the U.S.'s hands. I think the U.S. has superior talent, uh, a lot of veteran leadership. They have, they have a great team. They have a, they, have a, they, have, they have a really strong team, second best in CONCACAF right now, with, without any doubt. So if Guatemala decides to come out and uh, really go for it, I think that plays into the U.S. hands. Then again, when you have um, someone like Let's say Marisa Du, who's prone to give the ball away. That's 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 also dangerous. And if you have to take out a Clarence Goodson or a Carlos Bocanegra, if there's a heaven forbid an injury, and all of a sudden you put in a Jeff Cameron or a Gutierrez, who I don't think either of those guys have a lot of confidence right now. So um, the, the, I think the first 20, 30 minutes uh, are going to dictate a lot of things, as it always does. But I, I think with the lineup that's there now, that eleven that the U.S. put out puts out is a uh, stays in the game, stays healthy, then. The U.S. is well positioned to uh, have a really positive result. You said it, John. That's the A team, right? That I think that's what you said on Twitter a little bit ago. I, I really believe it is. I mean, Torres is right there. I mean, we got Stu Holden, who's who knows what's going to happen when he comes back. But this is the squad. They they proved it. And Jurgen, you know, he he gives guys chances. And if you if you work your tail off like Hercules Gomez, he's going to keep giving chances until someone unseats him. And I think this is the team. I think this is the team that really has a chance to, to make an impression, and I really do believe they will tonight. Do you have uh, Do you have a prediction for us, John? You want to go ahead? Absolutely. And... All right, go for it. I think it's going to be two zero. I think the U.S. is going to win Dos Uh I think that you know if it's if it's if Guatemala comes out and punches us in the face and uh, gets an early goal, which heaven knows we've seen plenty of times in, in games like this. Um, I think the U.S. still has what it takes to rebound, but I, my prediction is that this back four is the right back four, and they will hold a, a they will keep a clean sheet. Maybe Timmy will come up and make a big save. I haven't seen a lot of that out of him in recent games either. He really he really has had some chances to stop some shots that he, you know that maybe in the past he would have, and he hasn't, which not a lot of people are talking about. But I think the U.S. can really uh, get up with high pressure and really kind of uh, dictate the game. That's what I'm expecting tonight. We've gone through this whole conversation. I haven't mentioned Landon Donovan, at least directly. Uh, just You think he's going to come out and have a, a good game? Is this a bounce-back opportunity for Landon Donovan? I don't think anybody's thought he's played well since Scotland. Yeah, the Antigua game, was he was fine. I mean, he, he didn't have his best game, but he there was, as we said, they just parked the bus. There was, there was no room. He and Dempsey were sort of trying to do little one-twos back and forth, and there just there was three guys around him constantly. So 
if we see that tonight and, and Guatemala really wants to, to risk, you know, a one nothing loss with two shots on goal, then we might not see a big game from Donovan. But if it's an open affair, if the U.S. gets out ahead, uh, or if Guatemala decides just to, to play, uh, play, play on both sides of the pitch, then I think Donovan is going to get into space. He's going to use his smarts and he's going to put the ball where it needs to be. I really think that he might get an assist or two tonight. I, I think that he set up for a successful game. I love the positivity. John Godfrey from the New York Times Goal Blog. Appreciate the, the time tonight. John, enjoy the game. Hey, guys. Uh, look forward to uh, future conversations. Look forward to the game. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Thanks, John. All right, so we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll reset. We'll open the phone lines. We'll get ready for USA Guatemala. Coming up shortly, I'm not sure when kickoff is exactly. Best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, NASN.TV. Jason Davis, Jared Dubois, back on the Best Soccer Show, live pregame edition for USA Guatemala, happening in Guatemala City in about 13 minutes, we suspect. I don't know if anybody's got a grainy stream out of Guatemala City yet, Jared. It, it, it is in Guatemala City, City, right? I'm just assuming. That's like the I one. I can't name a city in Guatemala. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So I, I, feel, I feel like I'm completely uninformed. All right, people, we've got to line up. We talked to John Godfrey. We've gotten his thoughts. He's going with a, with a 2 nothing win. I, I might be just a touch less uh, optimistic than John, but I think it's going to be a win. I'm looking for three points here, and I think three points are, are crucial, obviously, to the to the not only to the the effort to qualify to get into the hex, but to the project that Jurgen Klinsmann is trying to build here. This has got to be a positive result. We are opening the phone lines two zero one four three zero two three seven eight is the phone number if you want to call in and get your thoughts on the lineup. Uh, Fabian Johnson being back, we can just all woohoo about that. Um, and we're on Skype. Best Soccer Show is the Skype name if you want to go that uh, go that route. Jerry. Yeah, I asked. I asked. Uh, I asked John about uh, if Guatemala is going to play kind of in the shell or anything like that. Here's the thing: if Guatemala does choose to do that and play direct, and there's a good chance they might, th this really plays into the hands of what for, in the hands of Guatemala for what the U.S. kind of fails at recently. And we talk all the time about that gap between the back four and the midfield. And if they're playing that direct style with Kurt, with Carlos Ruiz up front, not a tall guy, their goal isn't to win the ball in the air. The goal is to, for them to win the second ball. If they can win the second ball, Guatemala has a great chance of unlocking the U.S. Uh, defense. This is why. I mean, not that, not that I think you would go with somebody like Jeff Cameron, a, a fairly inexperienced player in a hostile environment like that. But this is why you go with Clarence Goodson, right? Mm -hmm. um, good in the air, fairly, you know, it, not the best on the on the offside trap, but he is he is yeah. at least competent in, and and won't make a lot of silly mistakes. He's not going to slip up, and he's not he's not going to pull a. I hate to do this to the kid, but he's not going to pull a Tim Ream and and lay off a soft back pass and 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 put your put your team in trouble. 
and and that's what Carlos Ruiz is going to feast feast on is if you make yeah, a Carlos Ruiz, he's not going to be trying to win these balls in the air. He's going to be trying to bump the defender, make that ball bounce 15 yards back the other direction to where hopefully Guatemala's going to try to position their guys on the goal side of Marisa Du, Jermaine Jones, try to take advantage of their speed and um, unlock that space of uh, that space right between, uh, between the back four and the midfield four. And if they can do that, I right. mean, well, the U.S. is going to be on their heels, and that's, that's not where you want because the speed is a really ish big issue with the U.S. back line. Right. And you know, obviously you want Moadu to help out with that effort. Area code three four seven. Who's this? Hey, it's Mark Fishkin calling, boys. How hey, are you? Mark. Oh, what's up, dude? Uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm also seeing a win tonight. I'm seeing hopefully some movement from New York's attackers. I mean, that's what we so want. often in the game against mm -hmm. Antigua. Look, when you pack in the back you got to actually have some motion around the guys that are actually looking to break in. I can see us snatching another goal on a set piece, but frankly, nice. I'm really worried that our guys up top just have forgotten how to actually move their legs. Well, I mean, you think that was a, you think that was a function of the way Antigua and Barbuda played? I mean, they were certain, and, and I know Canada wasn't a great effort, and, and I think the movement kind of went out the window there, too. But we, they're, obviously, they're obviously capable of it. I mean, I don't know if it's just that Scotland was so bad, it allowed them to do it. They're, they're certainly capable, but when you're talking about compact spaces like that, I mean, it, it may not just, it, I'm going to run from this spot into another guy over in that spot. I mean, if there's not clear avenues for them to, to make these runs into, that's probably part of the problem. So if Guatemala packs it in, then, then it, it could be an issue. And we've talked about them having problems breaking down teams that are bunkering. But if Guatemala wants to play a little bit and being at home, why wouldn't they? Then that actually plays into the USA, uh, USA's hands. You know, and just to talk about what John Goffrey talked about, he's talking about uh, Dempsey and Donovan and the one twos. The issues weren't with their one twos. They were actually pretty good with one twos. The problem is they kept doing one, two, three. That third pass is what was messing up the U.S. all, all night in the offensive third. There's two, is too compact, there wasn't enough space, and they were trying to force the ball through the middle. Dempsey and Donovan, when they played it simple, just a nice little one-two, opened up a lot of space in tight areas. It's that extra pass that they were making rather than being selfish in front of goal. And I think that's what I want to see tonight in front of Guatemala. Get that shot off and get it off early. In the first 10 minutes, try to get one or two shots off. Put Absolutely. Guatemala on their heels and th establish that threat early. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about, Mark? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I'm hoping for a great game. You guys do an amazing job. Keep it up, and we'll talk to you post game. All right, Mark. See you. Uh, yeah, I, look, I, I like I said, I, I a little bit less uh, optimistic than John was, and and I, while I could see two nothing happening, I'm, I don't know. I just have this gut feeling that that Guatemala is going to get one, and and I don't know how it'll happen. A dodgy penalty. Carlos Ruiz does something shady, uh, yeah. and, and the ball goes into the back of the net. And and and, and it, what I'm looking for then, if that happens, and I don't I obviously don't want it to happen, but if it does, I want to see the response from the United States because they, you know, they 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 came back a little bit and and imposed themselves on the Antigua and Barbuda. This is a step above that, right? I mean, this isn't Honduras. This isn't even, you know, it's definitely not Mexico. It's it's not Jamaica for that matter. But it's it's in that re well, maybe it is Jamaica after tonight's result. But it's it's something that they have to do if they're going to, to like get going from a high school girl to a college girl. It's not good enough just to be good looking and have a good line. You gotta have a little bit of intelligence. You gotta have a little swagger to to get that college girl. You know, high school is easy. High school is easy. Play a sport. Do whatever. You go to the next <laughs> that next level. You gotta bring your A game. And it, what's then? That's not to say that Guatemala is a world beater in any stretch of the imagination. But this is a tough place to play. But I like what Jurgen Jurgen Klinsmann was talking about this week. Everyone talks about it's a hostile environment. Hostile environment. He comes out and says. Turkey's no different. Right. I mean, Iran's no different. There's hostile environments all around the world that everybody has to play in. He's trying to get his players in the mindset that this is no different than what every other player in the rest of the world also has to go through for World Cup qualifying. Let's stop building it up. Let's stop talking about bags of urine and, and coins and batteries being thrown in the field. That happens everywhere. It's, it's a good point. Um, just a, a tweet from Brett Latham, who's down there in Guatemala at the game. Stadium about three quarters full tonight. Uh, most fans seem to be resigned to defeat, but hopeful. I mean, that, that's, that, that's... Have they not that, been watching the U.S.? <laughs> Maybe they should have a little bit more confidence. Is that what you're trying to say, Jerry? Uh, they heard Fabian Johnson showed up, so they didn't bother to. Right for the picking. Look, we've been in this situation before, and I'm not, I'm not trying to gloss over Central America in qualifiers. It's always a problem. It's, it's rougher in, in Honduras than it is in Guatemala, but, or Costa Rica for that matter, but it's, it's not this big giant dragon that you have to slay. It's just, it's just a little rougher, right? I mean, it's just a little rougher. If they have the mentality to get the job done, they, they, they shouldn't have a problem with this. They are, they are far and away the better team. They are far and away the better team, right? 
I mean, yeah, I just think the U.S.'s issues, they, they, they rarely seem to play with the swagger that they should own. They should own the swagger. They should own the fact that they play in some of the best leagues around the world. They're some of the best trained athletes. They have a great m money behind their program. They need to start going down to these other nations and play with the swagger that, that the U.S. kind of says, has earned over the last 10 years. They've right. earned that swagger in this conference. Yeah, they There's really have. This is why people say we need to clone Clint Dempsey. Eleven Clint, well, ten Clint Dempsey's out there. On the That's a lot of back heels, dude. That's a lot of back heels. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of back heels. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of tattoos. Um, well, that this we didn't talk about the players on the bench tonight. For those that may not know, players on the bench tonight: Jeff Cameron, Oguchi Onyewu. Does that scare you that Oguchi Onyewu was on the bench? No, not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't see him getting into this game if it's anywhere near close, and. If he does get in the game and it's out of hand, then I'm not going to sweat too much. I, I think that you've got Jeff Cameron there as an option. What? Who else are you going to? Who's not dressed? Nick Raimondo's not dressed. Um, Edgar Castillo's not dressed. And uh, Terrence Boyd, surprisingly, okay. not dressed. Okay, but you've got Josie Altidore dressed. So why would you need an extra defender if you've got well, Jeff I Cameron? Mean, Jurgen Klinsmann's shown that Terrence Boyd is his flavor of the month right now. Terrence Boyd has been a guy he's given a lot of time to recently. And then to go with a player like Wondolowski instead, Wondolowski's on the bench, a guy who's seen no minutes. Well, maybe, maybe a couple garbage minutes, I think, in the Scotland game. But he's never he hasn't really had any role in this team in the four games leading up to this one. It's going to be a lot to ask of Chris Wondolowski to come into this game and really try to make a, a, a stance in it. But this is a guy that knows how to score. It's a lot to ask. A guy who who is just completely rampant in MLS, who obviously knows how Come to Come on. How long has he been rampant in MLS? No, I, 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 I'm just saying. He he knows how to score. I mean, I, I know he hasn't done it with the national team on a consistent basis, and that was why there was, con not controversy, but some backlash when he was named to this team in the first place. But he certainly knows how to get a job done. And if you, if you don't have Hercule Gomez to bring off the bench because you're giving him a start, and I'm absolutely fine with that, then why not Chris Wondolowski the last 10 minutes of the game? I mean, he, he's, going to, he's going to pull defenders all over the field. That's, it, he's going to do that. That's what he does. You're not going to get the same thing out of Josie Altador, are you? So if you're, looking no. for that kind of, if you're looking for that effect, but you have Josie Altador to lean on a guy if you want to go in that direction. So he gives Jurgen Klinsmann's uh, uh, options, right? I mean, if we are in need of inserting a striker, I hope that that's not necessary. I mean, you might pull off Herc because he's dog-tired by the 75th, but that's the only reason. Before we went on the air tonight, you and I were kind of talking about the guys that are on the bench and kind of surprised to see Joe Corona gets on the bench for this game. Big deal. Makes me wonder, the, it makes me kind of question how ready Jose Francisco Torres maybe to play, is to play a role in this. We know he has the deep bone bruise, went off uh, uh, on the stretcher last game, Pat had ice on it on the sidelines. Joe Corona makes the bench. I think that's a direct correlation to whether or not Jose Francisco Torres can really give anything to this game because Joe Corona is going to try to do this kind of the same things that uh, Torres is going to try to do. Hold the ball, slow it down, distribute the ball, maybe give a little bit of patience. But once again, we talked about a lot to ask of a player with not much of a role in this team yet. I mean, Joe Corona is yet to have an official cap, well, official international cap that's right. going to tie him to the, to the U.S. national team. To get the first one away in Guatemala, that's asking a lot of this player, and, and your sure. must have a lot of confidence. If you're, if you're going, I, 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 I'm, I'm fairly confident in Joe Corona. Everything I've seen to, from this point, uh, at this point tells me he can handle this. I mean, I, I think that he's, he's not quite uh, Jose Francisco Torres, but he's a, he's a bigger player. He's not going to get knocked off the ball as easily as as Torres and in 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 uh, maybe a little quicker. I mean, I haven't timed their these, these guys, but I feel like uh, Corona has, has uh, more straight uh, line speed than than Torres does. I, and I I don't know. Cor Corona will attack with more energy than Torres. I mean, we're not going to get to a point. I where think Tor Corona's going to want to turn towards goal a lot more than uh, Torres is going to want to turn towards goal. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that that's part of it. I mean, I, I like you said, Torres is is has is coming off an injury. Again, options for Jurgen Klinsmann. I'm that th this is wh whether or not the United States has depth in in the sense that they could roll out a second eleven and beat some of these teams in Concacaf. I don't know. Um, we've seen it in Gold Cups not go so well, but they are certainly deep enough that he has some quality options. Uh, Joe Corona is not a a uh, starting eleven cal caliber international yet, but but. It, I don't think this is game is beyond him. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt to cap tie a guy that can play for Mexico or El Salvador as well. The guy plays in Tijuana. I'm just. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, I, what's no, wrong with that? No, no. I'm just saying it's not Guatemala City, but I just mean that you can get a lot of quality things in in Tijuana, my friend. <laughs> you would know firsthand. 
Is that, I, is live, that... I live like, kind of close to the border. I could be there in two hours. Yeah, you may have experienced Tijuana for a yeah. uh, Seen some stuff. All right, let's let's uh, let's get this wrapped up. Not quite sure when kickoff's going to be. Uh, I've got ten o'clock. Make sure you check out uh, the best soccer show on iTunes, um, at NASN.TV for all of our shows. Uh, we do regular shows uh, Sunday and Wednesday when we're not in uh, U.S. Men's National Team game action formats. So, uh, final thoughts, Jared. Give me a prediction. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more drawn out affair. I think maybe the U.S. gets away with a one-one draw here. Uh, I think it's going to—they're going to have to work a lot harder than maybe uh, John was talking about. I'm not sure Guatemala is going to open it up quite as much as he was talking wow. about. I That's hope they do. Thick. You're, it's, you're way more. It's better. a way and it's way a way in World Cup qualifiers, okay. and the U.S. has not looked that impressive outside of the Scotland game. I, I'm way more confident than, than that. I'm going to go with uh, two-one United States. I think like way I said, more I think confident. It's one goal different. Well, no, I'm splitting the difference between you and Godfrey is what I'm basically what I'm doing. So you're right, we're back at halftime. Do not forget. Uh, find us on Ustream. I'm sure we'll still be there. NASN.tv slash live if you can't find us uh, on Ustream. Uh, so enjoy the game. Uh, hopefully this works out. Jared, I, I'm I'm not scared. I think three points is, is, is coming. I think three points is coming. See you guys in 45. All right, guys. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you at halftime. Bye. Soccer Show, North American Soccer Network. Jason and Jared back for post game. Well, it ended. This is the worst soccer game. <laughs> is that the worst game ever? No, no. no you no. know what that is, Jared? A Eric, soccer punch. Sorry. Phone number is two zero one four three zero two three seven eight. If you have thoughts on that, on what we just witnessed, you know what just happened? Jurgen Klinsmann. It's it's a one one draw. You get out of Central America with a point. It's not the worst thing that's ever happened. It's it's disappointing. Jurgen Klinsmann just got his, his CONCACAF cherry popped. He just got it popped because there was bad officiating. There was, uh, you know, rough play. There was Carlos Ruiz. There was a late goal from a Central American opponent to, to bring that game level. Uh, we got a phone call, area, area code 651. Who's this? Hey, guys, this is Ben. Uh, just want to say decent results tonight. We'll take it. Um, all things considered, I don't think we should. Lost you there. You still there? Yeah. Okay. Can you, you hear me? You cut off there. Go ahead. Say that again. Got me clear? Yeah. Go ahead. So, decent results. I don't think we should ever be happy, but hey, all things considered, good points. Um, one thing I was wondering um, Michael Bradley, I know we have Edu and uh, Jones in there. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Michael Bradley released a little bit more into a, a forward position where he has more freedom to uh, just attack and create. I think. You know, he does a job that, in that whole midfield position. I don't know, you know, his exact role is. He's kind of free-flowing all around there. But I just wish he'd be up almost as a withdrawn striker. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but hey. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Least, yeah, he scored, <laughs> scored 20 goals. What, what was it? Yeah, but he, was, ago, he was making things midfield. Like, oh. He was making a lot of – he scored a lot of those goals from late midfield runs, and, and, and they just worked out. I mean, that was a, a perfect season from a goal scoring per perspective for Michael Bradley. He's not that guy anymore. If he gets you five in a season and he does all of that other work from on a club, club level, that's, that's a fantastic return for him. He's not that guy, and he shouldn't be that guy for this national team. We shouldn't be yeah. asking Michael Bradley to score a bunch of goals. I mean, when he pops off one, fantastic. It's a bonus. But you should be looking for, for Dempsey and Donovan and Altidore and Gomez. These are the guys that are so supposed to be scoring the goals. And again, like I said, Clinton got his cherry popped, uh, Jared. And, and I think, you know, as, as he great got as his cherry poppered. <laughs> there you go. That, that's actually, I, I should have come up with that myself. The, okay, how, how was Marco Papa not starting this game for Guatemala? I, I don't know. I, I was th thinking that to myself as the game wound it's down. The same single biggest thing that changed from the first half to the second half is Marco Papa stepped on the field and was dangerous all night. And he's no secret to those of us that watch MLS, to those of us live in the States and pay attention to the game here. Marco Papa is one of the worst kept secrets in CONCACAF. I don't know how he's not starting for this team. Everything changed when he came in the game and you ke he kept getting opportunities, half chances, sometimes from 25 yards out the, outside the box and looked dangerous every time he was on the ball. Yeah, and, and we said it, uh, you know, I think, I don't know if we said it at halftime. I, I guess we, it probably was halftime. We talked about those falls, those fouls just outside the box. You cannot yep. get those away. Those will come back and bite you in the ass. 
and and uh, uh, Fabian Johnson finds himself, uh, you know, in a battle with Carlos Ruiz. Throws throws an arm out when he doesn't need to. The ball's already gone. I mean, I know it's great like learning second. experience for Fabian Easy Johnson. For, yeah, absolutely. Easy for me to say this. And otherwise, Fabian Johnson had a wonderful night, and he makes that team a lot better. But mm-hmm. that foul in that spot with Marco pa- Marco Papa on the field for that free kick. That that takes two points off the the, the U.S. ledger, and, and and that's a problem. Area code seven zero three. Who's this? Uh, this is Michelle. Hey, what's up? It's the lady. Hey, um, I thought your comment when you started after the post game in the post game about uh, Clemson's introduction to Concacaf was really good, and I'm wondering what was his reaction? What did his face look like? Because I couldn't see it. Well, and how was... bad were the fans coming over the the? Just like always, blissfully ignorant. No, no, Klinsman, Klinsman was throwing a conniption fit on the sideline, and I, it, most of it stems from the, the foul that got called on Clint Dempsey at the top of the box when uh, Josie Yatsuba put the balls in the back of the net. And Rightfully so. Should have been played advantage. Have no idea why that wasn't played advantage. Uh, you know, this is after the, the ref has gone card happy and was throwing those all around. Michael Bradley gets a yellow card for time wasting in the 60th minute, which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But it's not Didn't that foul happen in the 59th minute? Because um, <laughs> on the ticker that I was watching on U.S. Soccer, it was the foul was in the 59th minute, and he gets a yellow card for delaying in the 60th minute. Yeah, I mean, only a minute. Yeah, it's less like, than a minute. Delaying. Yeah, it could have been seconds, to be honest with you. It depends on what, what what part of that minute it happened in. But it, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long by normal uh, get, getting the ball underway standards. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't that long in terms of people who are actually trying to time waste. He's standing over the ball, and 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 Guatemala, as they would, as they were doing all night, are crowding the free kick, not I giving mean, him space, not giving him space, let, making the referee back them off, and and that was basically what I saw. And I mean, I don't want to quibble about one yellow card. Uh, yellow card. Thanks for the call. I do um, because these yellow cards are going to stack up. This is a terrible thing to happen. I mean, the the result is bad enough because you were leading and then you give it away. And I, I, if you had told me beforehand, I think I said one one draw is what I predicted, and that's what came oh, about. Okay. And now that's a, okay. You can live with that. It, it sucks because you were up one goal and now you have to settle for the draw. What sucks is even worse than that is that you now have to take a piece of this game with you for right. game after game after game. These yellow cards, they don't fall off until the next round. These guys, these guys, you need to be rough on the ball. These guys, you need to take a professional foul once in a while. Your, your uh, Bradley's, your Jermaine Jones, your Clarence Goodson. I mean, almost everyone that result, revolves around being physical in this game has yeah. a yellow card. They're carrying now yeah yeah no i i understand area code 214 who's this uh hi this is manny from dallas hey what's up manny yeah we just finished watching the game at a bar here at the trinity hall uh, uh it's very silent i don't blame i don't blame i don't blame Quinsman if he decides to call it quits before he gets fired uh, wow uh, wow look man we had a lot of opportunities we played you know we could play pretty we have opportunities on there but nothing's happening Come on, that game should have been a lot more than what it was. Yeah, I look. Plain look, simple. we all saw it. Uh, what you know? What the f, Josie? Come on. Right. No. Jo- what was he doing? Josie. But, Josie yeah. had a moment or two in there. And look. Thanks for the call, Manny. I. I. I cannot. I'm not going to subscribe to the theory that the United States under Jurgen Klinsmann should have taken the next step so that Central American qualifiers become easy picking. It's not going to happen right now. They're not. They're not good enough to walk into that environment playing on that field. Did you see how many slips were out there? I, I was afraid that at one point when Tim Howard was playing the ball out of the back, he was going to slip a couple times give, and give the ball up to a, to a, a forward. Uh, uh, Carlos Ruiz probably poaching right there. And, and that was going to be the game. And that would have been an absolute disaster that I was afraid of that. That's the, this is just how things go. Now it's not an excuse. They should have played better. They should have put the ball in the back of the net. They, they shouldn't have been, um, I don't, I don't know. Smothered in the first thirty minutes, of forty-five minutes uh, of that. It, it, but that, that goes both ways, though, Jason. They should have been awarded the advantage and gotten a second goal. If, There's a lot of that if, in this game, and that's going to be point. every game in Concacaf, especially away games for the U.S. There's going to be a lot of this shoulda stuff. The fact the matter is, if we started qualifying and we said it'd be four points after the first two games, one of them being your hardest away match you're going to have, and you get a yep. you get a point out of it, you take those four points. Probably. If you look at it from a, a large, take goal differential out of it, don't worry about how many you beat uh, Antigua Barbuda by. Uh, don't worry about the fact you led this game and ended up drawing it. If you look just at the very surface results, it is bare bones minimum what you wanted out of these two right. games. A- absolutely. Air code 678, who's this? You there with us, caller? I'm dropping you. Let's go over to area code 469. Who's this? How you doing? It's Matt Driscoll from Dallas, Texas. Hey, what's up, man? 
How's it going? We are we're reviewing this match and right, give me your uh, were you out watching this tonight or were you at home? I actually ordered it at home. Did you? So are you uh, <laughs> kicking yourself a little bit for the 30 bucks? Just a little bit. I uh, I honestly think we're a little gassed. I think this little tournament deal that Klinsman has set up has got us a little tired. Yeah, there is some chatter about that, and I think I saw Taylor Twelman send out a, a tweet about it that maybe Klinsman is running these guys a little ragged in training, and, and that's a factor Jared, you buy into the their uh, they got an off when they got into Guatemala, they got an off day, uh, and then they also only did one practice in Guatemala, one like light practice last night. I think this game less than the other ones. I think leading up into the Antigua Barbuda game, I think you could definitely make that call. From what I've been hearing about with their practice schedule since then, it sounds like they've had a little bit easier go of it. What yeah. I will say, though, is the lack of first-team action and fitness of Josie Altidore is so readily apparent. He's not yeah. on the same page as the rest of these players. He doesn't seem as fit as, as we saw. For those that watched him play in, in Holland or in the Netherlands for the the, the – uh, for the for their season for AZ Alkmaar, this guy did not look any close to a shadow of that player. No confidence, and I wonder did did his team do him a disservice by breaking his confidence and not allowing him to come to this team earlier, and maybe even Klinsman a step further by not giving him any time. This guy did not look confident out there. Yeah, uh, Erico three two three. Who's this? Hey, this is Chris from LA. Hey, what's up, Chris? South LA, exact <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, yeah, just finished watching the game. Long Beach. By far, along with the, with the uh, Scotland game, this is probably the best team chemistry game that the U.S. have had within these last couple of games. And uh, it, it's evident in some of the one and two plays and some of the uh, the passing. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I noticed Donovan kind of holding back, like not having enough confidence yeah, you in know, the team. Because I, I, I noticed that as well. There was at least one, uh, one or two uh, trips down the wing for him where I'm saying attack the goal. Just go ahead and attack the goal. See what happens. If you got to pull it back to your left foot and, and send a cross, a low cross uh, across the face of goal, that, that's fine. But at least attack the space. And instead, he kind of pulls up and plays yeah. a, a looping cross back to the top of the 18, and that's just not going to get it done. When I, I noticed that as well, and I, I will say that one thing I was thinking about in my head as I was watching is like, I'm wondering if he's holding up the ball waiting for Fabian Johnson on the overlap. I kept wondering as he's waiting for the guy to come in on the overlap and free oh him on, on. But I, I agree with you. He either needs to have the killer instinct or have the awareness to know that that run's not coming. The in-between stuff is where it's getting lost right now. Dempsey, by, by the way, Dempsey's second half, and I think for most of the night, has done a very good job of finding Donovan. I'm not sure everyone else is doing a good job of finding Dempsey. Yeah, area code uh, 469, who's this? This is Matt with Dallas. I'm from Dallas, how you guys doing? <laughs> What's up, Matt? Yeah, I called him a couple minutes ago. I guess the call dropped, but I'm just uh, talking about how the, I think the team looks gassed out there. Okay, yeah, I mean, we, we're trying to move along and get to everybody, Matt, so I'm going to let you go. Uh, guys, there's one call limit tonight. We've got a, they're coming in fast and furious. People got opinions. Area code nine three six. Who's this? It's Jeff. Hey, what's up, Jeff? Hey, uh, yeah, from, I'm from that and I was watching uh, Clint play. He did good, but where Juan wasn't Torres in the game? Is he is he still hurt? Uh, I mean, I, I imagine that he is not completely recovered. I mean, despite the fact that he was dressed, I I, I didn't expect to see him at all. I don't. I'm not surprised at that. I mean, it would have been nice to have a guy as composed as, as Jose Francisco Torres can be on the ball in there. But I, I, in the I'm end, thinking this wasn't the game for Torres. Really chippy towards the end. A lot of physical play. A guy that's already nursing an injury. He's not going to give you a lot of defensive bite. And uh, and uh, the USA wasn't pushing for a goal except for maybe the last five minutes. It wasn't an issue. They're trying to slow the game down. I don't think this is the game for Torres. It's probably a right call not bringing him in. He was on the bench, oh. and I'm stoked to hear that Nagadoshis has internet. <laughs> Thank, thanks for thanks for the call. Uh, look, I I I I think it could have been the game for him if he was completely healthy. Uh, I'm not sure about the physicality of it. That probably would have been an issue. But it would have been been nice to find a guy to have a guy in there who could make the the right pass. I mean, they they got very narrow at some points where they're just there there weren't any options. They're getting bogged down in midfield. They're losing the ball. Uh, Jermaine Jones wasn't very good in the second half for Jermaine me. Jermaine Jones is killing me, Jason. He's killing me. Every time down the field, trying to be the playmaker, trying to dribble his way out of trouble. That's not his game. I don't know what his game is, to be honest with you. I'm kind of lost in what his game well, He's trying to do the job that, Bob, that Michael Bradley should be doing in this in this offense. Yeah, I, I, Consistently. And he keeps getting isolated on the wings. That's 
that's not Jermaine Jones' game. His game is Maria, Marisa Du's game, and I, you got to pick one of them. I think I don't know that you can pl keep playing both of them because the attack is suffering. If, Jermaine, well, if, if Jose Francisco Torres comes in, it has to be for one of those two. Uh, area code six seven eight. Who's this? Hello. Hey. What's up? Who's this? What's up? I'm Alex. What's up, Alex? So I just want to agree with. Uh... Jared over here that Jermaine Jones, I don't understand why he's on the squad in the first place. Well, I, I think he's a very good player. I mean, this is what I was trying to get. get I mean, this is what I was going to say to, to Jared in response. He's a very good player. I think if, if you put him where Marisa Du is, you risk trouble because Jermaine Jones has this wild hair about him. He wants to play the ball forward. He wants to make kind of uh, balls yeah, and passes. Hard. That's the problem. Well, I was in the match in Antigua, and I was just watched the second half of this match. I just don't understand why Jurgen Jurgen has one. I need to be a sub. <laughs> well, okay. So, so opinion has has wildly turned on. All right, Alex. Who who takes his space? Who well, takes his place? I, I just let Alex go. But I because okay. look, I we're they are coming in. No, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the I think that he needs to be on the field because I think he is one of the most uh, technically proficient players that we have. Despite the fact that he does the things you're talking about when. When he's on, there's not a lot of guys in this team that can do the same things Jermaine Jones his does. His style of play, his style of play on the ball, is almost indicative of everything I know about him physically. And it, it, he's a head case. The guy's okay. a head case, and it looks that way in his passing. It looks like he does, he's between two minds consistently in how he passes the ball, the decision that he makes. I don't understand what he's bringing this game, this team in this formation that they're playing right okay. now. I, I, if you if you are if you want to buy that Michael Bradley can do what Jermaine Jones does, and you can slide in Jose Torres or somebody else, then I, I might agree with you. Area code seven one three. Who's this? Hey, uh, this is Drew from Houston. Hey, Drew. Hey, uh, I'm just. Uh, I think that we should be putting Jermaine Jones um, in a more you know central like defensive midfield role along with Bradley. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't see why we're trying to push him forward all the time. It doesn't really. You know, well, I mean, who's who, who, who's going to do it, Drew? I mean, that, I think that's the issue: is who's going to take on that job? To to, to I mean, obviously in the future, Stu Holden, but like I, right now, I don't know. I mean. Yeah, I had that conversation all night, Drew. My, my brother and I are sitting here having that conversation all night. Stu Holden can't get back quick enough. That box-to-box -box midfielder is what we're missing. Bradley can do it to a certain effect, but uh, Stu Holden can do a lot more of it at the offensive portion of what Jermaine Jones is doing. I, I, maybe you have Jones and Bradley. I mean, sorry, not sorry. Jones and I do together and have Bradley play that role. But he's, you know, as you guys were saying earlier. Well, I mean, days, he's not, yeah. It, it, part of Bradley's problem is that is it's not it, it's not his. His natural instinct to play to 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 do that is it? I mean, he would. We've heard about this. He would rather be sitting in front of the back four and protecting the de the the defense and and cleaning messes up and then getting the ball moving forward. He's not the guy that that wants to be you know second or third in line to take the ball and, and make the last pass. Or I mean, that's the thing. We don't do we have be, somebody to make that last pass? We're 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 trying to play out to the wings. That's not working. There there is there is a isn't that Donovan's job? In my I, mind, that's Donovan's job. So. I would think that's that, that, that's not of his job as well, but when he gets isolated on the left and, and, and makes poor decisions, it doesn't help. Erico 347, who's this? Hey, this is Claudio from D.C. How's it going, guys? Hey, Claudio. Reina? Yeah, I, I, yeah <laughs> Claudio. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I would respectfully disagree on Jones. I mean, yeah, he's, he, he'd probably try to play out a little bit outside of his game, but I think Klinsman is going to be able to work a lot of that out. I mean, you see that he's been able to improve his temper control and, and he's been able to be less of a hothead and then be a little smarter. Okay. Um, I think he'll, he'll take that overambitious uh, miss out of his game, especially as other players start to step up in the offensive final third. But, but maybe that's what Klinsman's asking him to do. This is my fear, that, that maybe Klinsman sees Jermaine Jones, you know, and forget the German factor, just, just consider his pedigree as the guy that, that should be doing what he's doing now. I mean, it, it's not working all the time. And look, we're frustrated because they, they, they don't put a couple of balls in the net against Guatemala, but if they had managed to score two or three, even if Jermaine Jones has an 80% return rate, you know, like 85% of his runs end in failure, we're not as worried about it because the, 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 the offense is working in other ways. That just didn't happen tonight. You got anything else, Claudio? No, I mean, I, I think I, otherwise, I, it, you know, it's a disappointing to lose it on the last second. But uh, overall, it, it, you know, I think we're, we're good with the four points. Yeah, it's, thanks for the call. It's, it's really, it's just the disappointment of giving up that foul. Letting Jason, it what did you think of Jeff Cameron in the second half? 
I, you know what? I didn't notice Jeff Cameron too much. In the I film. didn't even know he was on the field for a bit, to yeah, be well, honest with you. I had to see it on Twitter. Area code 484, who's this? Yeah, it's Mike from Philly. Hey, Mike. I talk a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. I was horrified by the amount of chances Guatemala had. I mean, that could have got ugly if it, they were a little more accurate there. It, that it, one ball from Ruiz, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it got, a, it got a little dodgy there uh, towards the end of the game. And Guatemala was really pressing. And, and we, well, we I, talked about it a little bit at halftime, Jason. How does a team that, uh, with the size of, of U.S. not take advantage of clearing out set pieces? Yeah, that, that, was, that, that, that was off a corner kick, if I remember correctly, the, the chance that Carlos Ruiz had. Ball drops in the box, and you said it. Just because these guys are small doesn't mean that they can't position themselves correctly to take mm -hmm. advantage of set pieces. I mean, you know, they're, I'm not, they, they're not. Tiny. I mean, by any stretch of the matter, they're not. They're not Clarence Goodson no, and Book and, and, and it and it should be. It should be easier to clear out those those chances. Erico seven one three. Who's this? Okay. Background noise. Who's this? All right. Letting you go. Let's move on. Erico eight zero one. Who's this? Yeah, this is Colin. Hey, what's up, Colin? Yeah. Why is Jermaine Jones taking that free kick? Uh, not to pile on it too much, but that's I have one. no confidence that that was going in. Yeah, we had a oh, couple yeah. of, of just disastrous free kicks. I think Herc took one that was about 80 feet over. The I've watched Herc. In 2005, Herc had that shot. That's his shot. He All he does is go for power, and he just tries to put somewhere on net. No bend, no curve, no finesse, no style points. That's Herc's shot. But the problem is that's also Bradley's shot. We yeah. don't have anyone that can bend a damn ball. Well, see, I think the thing I've seen Donovan do it. I don't know why he's t not taking these. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be consistently putting, you know, curled shots on on net, but he's got a better return rate than most of those Dempsey guys. wasn't just fouled, and he got up kind of kind of limping on that play. Maybe that uh, Dempsey takes that that kick right yeah, there. Mary code. Mary code uh, five one zero. Who's this? Hey, it's Cameron again. How you guys doing? <laughs> All right, Cameron, you're getting in for a second time. We don't normally allow this, so get your <laughs> get your point well, out. I appreciate quick. it. Thanks for taking my call. I actually thought they played better in the second half than the first half. They seemed like they created more chances. Um, I, I mean, really, it's kind of six in one half dozen in the other. It, uh, I, I think that they had moments in the second half, but they let Guatemala kind of uh, batter them for the for a while. And we just talked about the number of chances Guatemala had. It could have gotten right. it could have gotten away from them. It really could here's, have. It required... Here's what I noticed about the offense in the in the in the second half. Steve Trundolo was not part of it. Steve Cherundolo was completely absent in that second half. Maybe that's because Donovan moved over to the left and there wasn't really for him to combine with. Dempsey played almost entirely in the center in the second half. Cherundolo didn't really have anyone to bounce off of, but that means there should be space over there. That switch of the ball to open the space back up. Cherundolo was, was nowhere to be found in the second half, and maybe that's on purpose. Maybe they don't want to overextend and protect the 1-0 lead. I don't really know, but I remember almost no offense coming from the right side in the second half. I do remember at least one opportunity that that started with Chirondolo. I, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. That maybe he's just picking his spots now. I mean, it, it is that game was was extremely fast in the first half. I mean, you you, you don't want to burn uh, all of your energy trying to uh, trying to run run up and down the flank, creating offense when your first responsibility is is to play defense. So I I don't know that it was. I don't feel like we see a lot of Chirondolo anyway. I mean, if you guys think about the last couple of games we haven't seen a whole lot of him getting up and down the wings that, i'm okay i'm kind of okay with that if, if it means you're you're not mortgaging your right bad the defense on the right side if he's playing solid defense i can kind of live with him not going forward and that's the case tonight i don't think he got overextended on the right at all again you you have you have fabian johnson completely marauding up and down the left hand side which is which is fine i mean i, I it would be nice to have that option of Terundolo over on the right as well but uh, you, you don't want to you don't want to overcommit everybody and, and end up with a situation where you're, you're putting a lot of pressure on your center backs to take care of of all of that stuff. Area code seven one three. Who's this? Um, it just seems like we're kind of being predictable lately. It seems like that teams have figured us out and that we have you know kind of formed to the like we've done good things and it seems like I know you, you, I didn't want to say my name because you guys have heard me once before. <laughs> ah. So, you, so your, your point is that they're predictable. I think it's easy. Thanks for the call. It's easy. I need to start writing your numbers down. It's easy for, for us to say that they're predictable when they don't score. It, it, it's not necessarily that they're predictable. It's just that their decisions that they're making are the wrong ones, right? And for, the, for the most part. I mean, there were a couple of, uh, a couple of decent things. I think there was, uh, besides, you know, besides Dempsey's goal in the first half, there was um, 
there was at least one other decent shot that, that was either saved or blocked out deep. So, I mean, there are a couple of things happening, but they just... Are you, are I mean, you surprised that the overwhelming majority of callers so far have been negative, given they just got a point on the road in, in Central America? Is it just because there was a lead at first? I, I think the, the two factors. The lead, I think the expectations are pretty high right now. I mean, it, it, they're, they, they, tend to be, they tend to run high when we go to Central America, whether we should come back with uh, a point or three or, or, or if it's going to be way tougher than everybody uh, thinks. I'm kind of contradicting myself because I'm the one that said that they should be going down there with swagger. So if you're going to go down there with swagger and believe your team should, you should expect more than a draw, I guess. Like, it, it, yeah, certainly if you, if you are confident of, of your, yourself and you, and you think you're good enough to go down there and get three points, you should come back with three points. I, I, I mean, it's a disappointment. Whether they are okay with a point or not, it's still a disappointment. You, Crazy coming, what it comes down to, it's fundamentally su a successful trip to Guatemala. It's uh, from a comfort standpoint and from a stylistic standpoint, you expect more as a fan, I think, because you were up, the, the, you know this team is better, but at a, at a very fundamental level of what you'll accept coming out of that game, you're satisfied. And I think that's where I'm at with this. Yeah, I got hungry for more. They wet my appetite a bit. There was a nice little amuse-bouche to start the game. And <laughs> now, like, the, the dessert disappointed a bit. Well, it's, a, it's all about the big picture. And if you, if you are mostly uh, concentrating on just getting top two in the group and moving on to the hex, then that's what matters. Area code 408, who's this? This is Felix. Hey, what's up, Felix? Um, I think overall the result is okay. I mean... Yeah, the disappointment does come from having a lead person and giving it up so late. Um, but overall, uh, it's okay. Although the, the one thing about uh, having four points is that we're the only group leaders that don't have six points. The other two groups, the group leaders and the other two groups have six points. Yeah, I mean, so it, that's a little bit disappointing. Too. Sure, but it, I mean, it matters how everybody else plays. And, and look, I mean, I don't want to draw out from this because of all of the factors involved. I don't want to draw out big grand conclusions. I mean, I, it's it, they don't go they don't go back into qualifying until September. Is that right? So yes. there's there and 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 you're not going to have. Um, you're not going to have a lot of time to to work on the team between now and then, but this team might look different when we come back around. It, it, is it two? Is it a set of two with Jamaica? I mean, those are crucial games. Those are those will make or make or make or break this because if if you really think about it, Jamaica is probably best competition for for us. I mean, <clears throat> out of uh, out of this group or out of Concacaf, are, are pretty even. Who Guatemala and Jamaica? Yeah, they're, they're pretty easy. Yeah. Jamaica made the World Cup. Um, a few, I forgot when. Well, Jamaica, yeah, Jamaica's yeah. Jamaica's been there. Um, it, it's, I mean, again, I, I don't think know how Jamaica's going to give you a fundamentally harder matchup because they are extremely fast, extremely athletic, and extremely familiar with a lot of these U.S. players. Oh, because so many have played yeah. the MLS alongside them. That's a factor. Certainly, that's a factor. I mean, it, it's. Uh, uh, they're they're not stepping on that field with any fear whatsoever. I mean, no, not saw, at all. Especially after they played in the gold cup a year ago. Yeah, we saw what Antigua and Barbuda did with with them. Their attitude was, we have nothing to lose. They came out, and they gave the United States a game. The U.S. got three points. It was kind of ugly. I mean, certainly the weather didn't help the situation at all. But um, if Jamaica comes out with that same attitude, uh, be, you know, it's it's. It's going to be an issue. I, I'm, I may have my dates wrong, so I want to make sure on on the scheduling, Jared. Do you happen to Do you happen to have it for sure? I just I just don't want to get no, ahead. Of, I, I don't. I, I don't want to draw out a big grand conclusions from this game in Guatemala. I mean, with that trip again, I think the the thing what we've got what we can take out of tonight is that Jurgen Klinsmann knows what he's dealing with now, and maybe he didn't before. And it's easy to talk about, okay, we're the better team. We should be going in there with this attitude of walking in and taking points and, and, and making this our, our group, no questions asked. It's easier to say that than to, to actually go and do it. And now he's got this experience under his belt. Does this make Jurgen Klinsmann a better coach for the U.S. men's national team? Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think that... Here's the thing. I, I, I really do believe, and I said it in the pregame, I believe when Jurgen Klinsmann says that 
this environment or this type of qualifying is the same around the world. I don't think he's seeing anything here that he hasn't seen some point in his career. I Maybe he hasn't coached it before. Maybe he hasn't coached at that level or anything or in that environment before. But I think he prepared these players appropriately if that's the mindset that they went into this with. So, yes, he got his, his like you said, he pop out his, his cherry. and uh, But I don't necessarily think that there was, uh, I think he's been around the block a few times if we're going to continue that analogy. Maybe he's played a lot of floor play before. Well, yeah, he's, but he's done some heavy petting. Look, look, the 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 nature of Europe. I'm not I'm not sliding the quality of the competition. Obviously, there's a lot of, of very good teams in Europe, but the nature of that process is it's not as rough as what's happening here. It's not the same kind of experience. That was more. I mean, especially considering Germany was the team he was coaching. I mean, I'm just. I'm just well, saying. I would be interested to hear his comments after this game because if anything, Jurgen Klinsmann has been forthright and he's been pretty honest in his uh, his summations. I'd like to hear. I'm sure someone that is asking him right now what he made of his first experience in Concacaf and his first experience in the qualifier in, in Central America. I, I think he'll be pretty honest with it. I don't think he's going to give some kind of BS uh, politically correct answer. I think he'll tell you pretty much straight down the line how he felt, and I'm kind of anxious to hear about it because I think it's a, it's an interesting point. But I think he's going to say that it's pretty much what he thought it was going to be. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it, not a sexy it, answer. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I, I would, I would imagine he's going to spin this like he always spins everything, which is we need to learn from this, we need to grow from this. This is a learning, you know, this is a learning experience both for them and for me, and et cetera, and so forth. I mean, certainly most of those guys uh, knew what they were getting into, and they, and they knew how hard it would be. And you want to see a little bit more of a response. You got it from Dempsey. Fine, he's got the goal. He played pretty well in the second half. You, you, Michael Bradley, pretty good for most of the match. I thought Maurice Adu was fine, except for a couple of giveaways, at which he's prone to do. I did. You could write that. You could write that in, in a player ranking or for every game Maurice Adu plays in. No, I, I, I that's one, yes. one, one. A lot of good tackles. Uh, tough, tough in the tackle, physical on the ball, lost possession. That's Played, yeah. that's Maurice Adu every game. Well, not lost possession like it was a recurring theme over and over and over again. One or he doesn't two. Doesn't take care of the ball well. No, and there was a couple of times I'm yelling, concentrate, Mo. Just concentrate. You're making these these dumb passes. Just concentrate. Get the ball to and your for top. Jermaine Jones, he Jermaine Jones needs to embrace simplicity. He really does. He needs to just try to play the simple pass, not to do the a, extravagant pass, and just do what should come naturally to him. Play simply. I, he's in a position on the field a lot of times where if he gives up the ball, it launches a counterattack. Take care of the ball. Michael Bradley right now is the only one of those three guys that consistently take care, takes care of the ball very well yeah that's uh that's something that they're gonna have to work on and there's there's, there's a lot of things here I, i'm josie out the door was obviously a waste during this period complete waste because they didn't oh yeah get released, didn't get released in time okay but would you feel would you have that same summation of josie out the door if the advantage was played and he got a goal if he had the exact same game otherwise would you still be saying the same thing about josie out the door well i mean I, I think that you have to take the whole performance right i mean if you're going to judge fairly judge him versus everybody else you have to say okay even if he scores that even if they, the he lets that play go and and josie puts that ball in the back of the net you still have to say well on the whole he was pretty bad erica 917 who's this uh michael hey can you turn us down in the background there. Right on. Hey, what's up, Michael? What's on your mind? Yeah, I think we need wingers. You, we okay. Just well, play the game out. Who? Where are they? Who are they? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think Klinsman does either. I mean, we've got we've got two guys that would that that are most in fa- most effective cutting in as Jared continues to talk about that. That can be a good thing. If you're getting your width from your fullbacks, and we've got uh, Fabian Johnson willing to do the work, it's fine. Steve Trundlow slowing down, maybe picking his spots, not quite as as likely to push into the space that's vacated by Dempsey or Donovan, which whoever's on that side of that given time. You're not if you don't have classic wingers, which we just don't have in this mix right now, except for Breck Shea. You're gonna go find. Uh, you things. may be able to make the case for someone like Josh Gap, but really rough, really raw, really po- not polished yet. And in another maybe season, that is an answer. Maybe he should be pulled in as, as opposed to Wondolowski. Uh, that's oh, not, so, so many people in San Francisco just h- hate you now. I, I, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that that are exciting about Josh Gap, and apparently, I continue to hear this. I think it's our boy Sharetta who says fastest American player he's ever seen, which is. <laughs> Stunning, and that would be amazing to see him with the national team. But he's playing in Scandinavia 
and he's very, very young. Josh Gad is 20 years old, if I'm right. 20 years I old. I believe that's correct. And uh, I think it was only his second professional season over there. Just won the, the, the title there with them last year. Maybe he's got enough pub now. A lot of people saying if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had gone to Aston Villa, maybe Gat's the type of player he'd take with him. The guy's getting a lot of pub. He probably needs to make a step soon. Probably needs to get someplace else. He's on Klinsman's radar. If they made the Olympics, if the U23 three team made the Olympics, you would have seen plenty of Josh Gat at the Olympics. The yeah. issue now is you got to try to find a stream of him, and hopefully he gets a chance someplace else. Uh, up here in a friendly or something like that where you can really try him out. I mean, and that's the thing. When are you going to shove him into this team and say, are we, are we, we're comfortable playing the, this? The, the time was three months ago, Jason. The yeah, time was three months ago. Joe, Joe Zhao is, is mentioned here by a producer, and that's another good you know, option, but he's very young, very raw, incredible, incredibly We fast. don't have anyone that's 25 and plays as a winger. We no. don't. Who, who, who is the, the, the left-footed guy that, that, that's the winger in Mexico? The left-footed Easily? guy? Yeah, Demarcus Beasley. You could bring. You could bring. Could he be of use? He could be, but again, I think he's a late. I think he's a late game sub type of player. He's got really good defensive skills. Can go forward as well. And if I remember correctly, last few times I've watched him play for uh, Puebla, he's actually played pretty far up the up the field. I mean, really advanced position that I've seen him play. But Beasley is a straight up winger. The problem is Shea's probably a ninety minute winger. Beasley at this level is probably more of a thirty to twenty minute winger. Uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, it's possible, but. It, 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 but every could, one of these guys is left footed. Th- right. It's it's all left yeah, it's all well except we, for Josh Gat. Josh Gat. But but I don't know that that solves your problems necessarily because if you're if you're putting Demarcus Beasley on the field, are you taking Landon? Are we are you at the point now where we say maybe Landon Donovan needs to not be a starter? Are we there yet? I mean I, I think people are really down on Landon Donovan right now. Are, are we there, Jared? I'm not. I'm not. I, I, uh, but but I think that that our our formation is not really working. Okay. And we haven't figured it out yet, so we need to maybe try to put these people into the fold. Okay. Well, thanks for the call. I, I, that's, I, that, that's a symptom of not getting Dempsey and Britton Donovan on the field at any point in the last year. I mean, the formation part of this. You haven't. When's the last time you saw him play a 4 3 2 1 any time in the last year before the Scotland game? You never saw it. <laughs> Never. But these are professional players. They should be able to step into this kind of thing and find a way into it. But there's going to be a chemistry issue when you're playing, you're tinkering with the, all your starting pieces right up to the first game of World Cup qualifiers. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for the uh, post game show. USA won, Guatemala won. Slightly disappointing result. A point in Central America is never really that big, that big of a problem. I mean, it's never something that you should get super upset about. So I, I, I think we can walk away from this with. Heads held semi high, Jared. It's disappointing. It's the, the, listen, if you're a take care of business type of guy, your team took care of business. Yeah, that's the, that's the simple answer to uh, it. You are new to the best soccer show. Let me remind you now we do a show, uh, we release a show Monday morning and we do a live show with callers Wednesday night. NASN.tv is your site for that. Go find us there. We have lots of other good podcasts uh, at the North American Soccer Network. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and uh, ratings and reviews if you like what you hear. Uh, help us out a lot. Uh, emails are sh- uh, show at bestsoccershow.com. Send them in. And, we uh, also have a Facebook page. You can go there and like us on Facebook if you're not familiar with the show. We do do some Facebook-specific content, usually more a little free, free rolling and uh, whatever we want to talk about, pop culture stuff and some soccer mixed in. So make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Twitter, Best Soccer Show. All right, that's it. Are we done? Uh, are, we, are we okay? I want to know as a as a as a soccer. I have four mate, points, and I'm on four points with a away game and a home game, and on top of the group, we're okay. All right, we're okay. We'll talk to you guys uh, on Monday. Bye.